Hello friends, uh, the lecture for the today is foreign exchange risk and how we are going to manage it. This will be again very precise, we will not be enlarging it for a very lengthy discussion. Uh, so let's start with the topic. Now you see because you see foreign exchange is uh, essential for any sort of international trade, maybe an import or an export. Uh, the essentiality is like because we are dealing in two different countries, hence they do have their respective currencies. Uh, and uh, there is a need for exchange of these currencies. So there has to be some relationship between one currency and the other. So hence there is a foreign exchange market which determines the pricing or the comparative valuations of two currencies. Okay, so with this, because we are now no more restricted to one country only, so you cannot seal your border. Now it is a global village, global market where currency needs to be evaluated on market forces, demand and supply. So hence, because now it is going to be a wider market where demand and supply will be coming in from multiple factors. Like you see, it is not only one country, but it is approximately 200 countries who are going to bring in this cumulative demand and cumulative supply. So let's see who survives this market as a winner. So foreign exchange risk is any, any element of uh, like risk which originates due to this element of variability of valuation of forex is is actually the actual underlying concept that is for an exchange risk and management of this risk because you see when traders are getting exposed to this risk there is a need for managing the same so this risk can also be managed with whatever well established practices that we have we'll see how we do it so we will we'll not only be only understanding uh, the various dimensions of, of risk, but also we'll try to see how we can mitigate this risk to oh, oh, counter our position if something is adverse. Now, managing the risk associated with fluctuation in foreign exchange rate is crucial, but business operating globally, they have to do it. These global market conditions are very dynamic. They change overnight, they change hourly, they change minutely. So you don't have any control on the same. So central bank of any one country cannot control this for long. Okay, so the central currency that we use in most of our trade is dollar. So the other few currencies which are highly in demand is dollar, euro, yen, pound. So they are the well established instruments in foreign exchange market. Other currencies are also being traded, but there you see supply may be more, but demand is not there. So which may affect the pricing of a currency. Okay, so appreciation, depreciation is all possible depending on your market condition. Let's see what we have in this particular presentation. So now you see the various risk factors which can affect uh, forex transactions is basically the fluctuation in your rates which is beyond your control, which is beyond your market forces in local economy, which is like you see is a wider phenomena and uh, geopolitical factors also play a key role. There are so many things which influence your forex valuations. So let's go in and look into the various risk factors. First is currency volatility. You see unexpected changes in the exchange rate can bring in significant effect or impact on the company's profitability and competitiveness. You see, let's say there is a company called as ABC Limited. Now this company is having cost advantage. Now they are able to produce products which are available in market at a cheaper rate. Let's say this is in China, somewhere in China. This ABC Limited is having like uh, cheap labor and you see you do have a technology in place. So with this you, you are able to develop a product which is very very cost effective. Now you see point is like China is doing it since long. China is a market leader. But imagine with within short period of time if what, what will happen if China got a competitor in the form of India. And India is also able to do the same because India is again labor surplus. India is also having the latest technology. If they don't have it, maybe developed nations in order to counter China and its aggressive strategies, maybe possibly sharing their technology, latest technology for manufacturing products cheaply to countries like India. And they will make them a hub. Now you see what will happen. Due to this overnight demand, which is being created and is going towards Indian markets. You see Chinese markets will have an impact of the same. So companies profitability, company Chinese companies profitability will have an adverse effect. 
Now you see here, it is not because of demand and supply of products. Here, the entire discussion of risk factor is because of the demand and supply for these foreign exchange, foreign currencies, okay, which may affect companies. Now the only companies with global presence will be having this foreign exchange risk. Domestic companies who don't have global operations will not have any effect. So it is only meant for MNCs who do have multi-nation exposure, they, they are bound to have it and hence they have to mitigate this through various risk mitigation techniques. Next is, you see when you have uh, your assets and liabilities denominated in different currencies. Now you see let's say Tata Group, they have their origination in India but let's say they do have their presence in United Kingdom, they do have their presence in African countries. So where they have lots of resources under their disposal. Now you see annually whenever they have to calculate their profit or loss or they have to give us a consolidated picture. Don't you think they have to merge all their values, global operations together in one currency? Native currency is Indian rupee but let's say they are doing it in dollar term. So dollar denominated valuations are to be done for all the stakes that they have across the globe. So currency conversion is again going to take you for certain losses if your currencies in which you are operating in have a negative valuation. You see if these values go down, no doubt you are not going to sell them or buy these assets on very short term basis but point is like because we are going to do your valuation and on the day of valuation if these currencies do have a negative impact or in terms of valuation you see your overall consolidated value will also go down. This is what is exposure to losses due to assets and liabilities denominated in different currencies. Okay, let's go forward. Next is competitive disadvantage. Competitive disadvantage means foreign exchange which is getting fluctuation and you see this is for the case of a company who is into product and service manufacture and you see your product is getting a limitation. Why? Because now it is getting costlier. When it is getting costlier, it don't have more of demand. You just imagine, you see, let's uh, take an example, okay, mobile phone. So when you make a mobile phone locally, you have to use technology, you have to use labor, you have to use imp raw material imports and after doing it, now you're, do you're done with your production, final packaging and everything is done, okay. Now you see, imagine for this, if let's say you are bringing in some semiconductor chip from South Korea or from uh, Taiwan. Now you see, what they, imagine what will happen if something goes wrong. Taiwan is getting attacked by China and you don't have your supplier available to you. Don't you think your input cost will go up? And not only this country, uh, Taiwan is into discussion, but what is in discussion is, let's say now you switch to some other country. Let's say Sri Lanka starts exporting the semiconductor chips. Now you see, it can be A, B, C, any country. Now whichever country you are going in, you are going to change your service provider in a short term basis. What will happen is like your operational costs, your production cost will go up. You may not have long term contracts with these players. It is only due to disruption you are going in to find a new supplier. So you see such things may make your product costlier and may not be fitting in. Why? Because the uh, other competitor in mobile market is from Sri Lankan origination. Now you see because Sri Lankan origination people are using these chips at a much more co cost competitive rates than Indian companies. Hence your product may not be like more may not be accepted in global market. Reason is like your cost has gone up and Sri Lankan companies are able to sell it at a lower rates. So it is all cost competitiveness. So if they win it in cost competitiveness and you see you are losing it. Why? Because you have to pay it to Sri Lankan companies to buy and then you have to add your own margin there they didn't need not to have an additional margin let me make it a bit easier for you when you are taking something from india you have to pay it in indian rupee no foreign exchange risk you can give it to counterparty you can sell it to someone at a very low rate but let's say you bring in sri lanka because of sri lankan entrance in this contract of manufacturing you have to now outsource some of your product from sri lanka so there has to be some commission that has to be paid and foreign exchange is involved. So foreign exchange values may go up and down. So if you are paying, if you are supposed to pay to a contractor who is sending you some raw material, imagine if that foreign exchange valuation dollar 
is getting appreciated and Indian rupee is getting depreciated. So depreciation of local currency will be a limiting factor here and it will increase the cost of your product in international market, cost of your overall product and which will make Sri Lankan product much easier and much affordable by global players. This is what is China doing across the globe. China is bringing in cost effective products, local market rates, their producers, they are not able to produce it at such a rate and hence now you see this is problematic for China no problem because you are selling it at a very low rate so whatever foreign exchange you are earning is actually helping you to build up your foreign exchange reserves uh, in one of my previous videos you have seen that in terms of foreign exchange holding China is number one China is the biggest investor okay so you are holding huge amount of foreign exchange why because you are an exporter you are selling it to everyone you are a global manufacturer you are a global supplier so you are a very big market let's go forward now impact of Global milieu. Now, you see what is milieu? Milieu is social environment in which we are operating. So, this is like maybe due to global environmental practices, again, it you may have a factor. Like, you see, geopolitical factor, political instability. You, you can take the example of Burma, Myanmar, where political instability is there, and hence, you see, you, your currency may have a, a decline in valuation. Trade disputes, uh, trade dispute means India, China fighting on dumping of Chinese goods in Indian market. Let's say Diwali, Dashera, Holi, any other festival that we have in India. Like local producers are making goods, but their cost of production is a bit higher. What China is doing? China is selling you cheaper products at almost one tenth of your cost. What is happening here? They are producing it in bulk and selling it in India at heavy discounts, which local players cannot adjust to. So hence you see there such type of dispute between countries may be taken to international courts and you see here again when you have an international dispute going on so maybe there's a chance that you may uh, your currency may have a negative valuation okay why because you see you are not in good books right now so maybe your country may be blocked by trading members major trading partners globally or maybe there is a policy change in different countries now you see look into the case of uh, Maldives okay uh, what they did Maldives uh, they have actually switched from Indian partnership to Chinese partnership and they have asked Indian government to withdraw Indian forces very fast Indian medical support services have been also put on to halt now you see Chinese have taken over Indian position in case of Maldives now is actually going to have a severe impact for Indian uh, market but you see Chinese are emerging as a leader there now it is actually all competition this is all competition who is going to get a bigger share of market this is all uh, this is all called a strategic strategy which Chinese are using against India to counter India's growing influence in the Western region now you see entire West developed nations they are looking for an alternative to Chinese products. So India is emerging as one of your bigger, biggest collaborator or a partner. Hence, you see, in order to block India, this is what strategy in Chinese people are using it. Now, you see, geopolitical factors may bring in an influence on your currency. Next is macroeconomic trends. Now, we'll take the example of Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, you do have an economic crisis going on. Not only Sri Lanka, but also Pakistan. Interest rate movements are very adverse there. In order to take a loan, you have to pay high interest rate. Inflation is very, very high. For 1 kg of chicken, you have to pay 600 rupees. Whereas in India, it is 220 rupees. So, almost three times the cost. Border is just, you see from here, border is only 80 kilometers, 80 to 100 kilometers away when it comes to India, Pakistan. Okay. But in India, you get everything so cheap. In Pakistan, you're getting it costlier. It is, you see, product is same. But it is only the currency valuation which is actually... Uh, differentiated in these two countries. India is holding a strong position, whereas Pakistan currency is very weak because of their political and uh, economic instability. You see, you bring in stability, you make bring in good relations with your neighbors, everything will come back to normal. Now, it is abnormal. Why? Because you see certain things in past have not gone down correctly. So, you, you country's political establishment needs to make sure that everything goes well economic growth pattern is again going to have an impact on your value you see it, 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 take the example of Zimbabwe or Venezuela where inflation has gone up to 
Like you see, you cannot imagine ten lakh times. Ten lakh times means it is so high. And yani what it means ki like your currency loses relevance and people will start using your currency as a raw material to process their food. So instead of wooden like fuel, you are using currency notes. Why? Because currency don't have any value. So they are, they are, uh, what they are doing is, in order to give higher wages to their staff, they are printing new currency notes. So what is this adding to? You are not able to bring in additional supply. You are not able to produce. So production is all same, but only thing that you are producing is currency notes. So you are leading to in inflation and if it, it is going to be beyond control, it is called as hyperinflation. So macroeconomic trends will further decide the value of your currency. Okay, whereas go to some other countries like you see, go to Middle East, oil exporting countries, there you will see their currency has very strong valuation. Population, they don't have much. Employment, they have better than any other country. So what they are good in is like crude oil and various other, uh, like you see, sources of energy. So they are exporting it to all foreign countries. Means, you see, their currency value is very strong. And it is not going to be a permanent phenomenon. Imagine if, if after 50 years or 100 years, crude oil, entire supply is going to be exhausted altogether. These currencies will lose their valuation. The entire reason for these currencies to have the value is they have the dominance on crude oil resources. And they are selling it to global markets. So whatever price they set for per barrel, you have to pay. You don't have much of choice. It depends on market forces. Sometimes it is a cartel who is op operating. You have heard about OPEC group, oil and petroleum exporting countries. So they sit together, fix the price and accordingly they bring in the production. So if they cut down the production, what it means? Supply is going down. When supply is going down means demand is high. Supply is going down means prices are going to go up. So they are deciding it, sitting up together. So what price should be there? Now you see, this is what is cartel formation. So again, uh, exports and imports, if you export more, import less, your valuation will be better. But if it is reverse and you have a negative balance of trade, like in case of India, what we have is like we have more of imports and less of exports. In such cases where you have to pay in foreign currency for crude oil, for gold imports, then in that case, you see current local currency value is going to go down. Okay, so in order to improve the valuation of your local currency, what do you need to do? You have to export more as compared to your imports. So market sentiments, next is market sentiments. Investor confidence will actually, you see, what is confidence? Confidence is like how is your market go, going to act in future? If investors are confident about the market conditions so, and you see what will happen, you will find more of stability. But if you don't have confidence, what it leads to? It leads to speculative behavior. So speculation may be a short term phenomena, but it, it is what is actually dragging your market up and down. So Forex market may have rapid unpredictable swings means may go up or may come down is because many of the people in market, they don't have a long term horizon. They are into they're, they are into market for making short term gains. So they are adding to speculative behavior. They, they are adding to speculative practices and which is bringing in volatility. So all these factors are going to play a key role. Next is like what are the various types of foreign exchange risk? The main three types of foreign exchange risk is transaction risk, translation risk and economic risk. Okay, now I'll, I'll give you one example each. Transaction risk, what do you mean by transaction risk? Let's say I'm India and I'm a businessman who is doing a transaction with another Japanese company and you are the, the, this is bullet train uh, contract which is going on. Okay, so if Indian company is supposed to pay Japanese firm uh, that that too in dollar or yen form you see oh, contract is for six months means I am going to place an order today and we are going to get these deliveries over a period of six months and I am supposed to pay 50% in advance and 50% after the completion of my supply which is after six months now you see for today I understand what is my current rate but for future I don't know so that future rate may go up or may go down. Okay, so there is a possibility, there is a risk where value may go up and down. If it is going down, it's good for me because I have to pay less. But if it is going up and valuation is getting stronger and stronger, then I have to pay for more. So this volatility brings in an element of risk. This is something to do with transaction risk. So let's read what it is there. It, is, it arises from the effect that exchange rate fluctuation have on companies obligation to make or receive 
payments denominated in foreign currency. Now you see what we are discussing here is either to receive or to make a payment in foreign currency where value of foreign currency may fluctuate. Okay. Next is translation risk. Now you see what is translation risk. Again, I'm taking you to the same example which I quoted on the last slide where let's say Tata Group is having multi-country operations. So on 31st of March, they have to consolidate their total balance sheet taking the reference of all their subsidiaries across the globe. Foreign subsidiaries are also counted for in terms of assets and liabilities. Now these currencies, the, the, these assets and liabilities, these are the components of balance sheet are denominated in different foreign currencies. So currency translation is required in domestic currency. So translation risk means any such conversion from a foreign currency to local currency for reporting purpose will lead you to losses. Only the, these are only notional losses, but loss is a loss. You should understand this perspective too. And then third is economic risk. Now economic risk is the most least heard risk out of the three. So you, you see this is again very important. Why? Because it is caused by the effect of unexpected currency fluctuation on a company's future cash flows and market value. This is for long term I'm saying. Again I'm repeating. These are the effects of fluctuation in in a particular uh, uh, company cash flow it can be in any currency and this fluctuation is going to be there affecting your market value in long term it is of long term nature not of a short term nature like speculative practices are all short term and uh, you see here economic risk is when it is taken for long term period now these are the different types of risk under forex category now you see again we are going into these one by one. Currency risk is the first risk. Let's be short and precise. Currency risk arises when a company has an asset and liability. Or you see when you have a balance sheet means what it means. You are operating in a uh, zone where you have multiple currencies. You may have expenses. You may have revenues which are being dealt in foreign currencies. Now you see what is this. This is leading to your exposure to these currency risk next is your performance may affect your performance any what i'm saying is you see unfavorable currency movements can lead to decreased profit now i'll give you one example let's say it companies tcs wipro infosys they all are it companies what they do they make softwares they uh, help foreign companies in terms of it support now you see when you do some service to a foreign company they pay you in dollar term okay they pay you in dollar term imagine what will be the effect of rupee appreciation for these companies if rupee is going to be appreciated they are exporters they are going to get dollar if rupee is going to appreciate against dollar what will happen they people will lose it yani exporters will never expect indian rupee to go up exporters will only be benefited when Indian rupee will go down. What it means? Let me explain you. Let's say for one dollar you have to pay 80 rupee Indian rupee 80 Indian rupee to get one unit of dollar. Okay. Imagine Indian rupee getting stronger. What it means to get one dollar now you need not to pay 80 you have to pay only 75. So what it means like when these foreign companies are getting their foreign payments or remittances in foreign uh, foreign exchange let's say they are getting dollar and yesterday dollar was 80 rupee per dollar today it has come down to 75 what it means the company's earning will come down from 80 lakhs to 75 lakhs overnight why because there is a decline in per unit of dollar by 5 rupee so depreciation for local currency or is good for exporters Imagine another scenario where 80 rupee dollar has gone up to 90 rupee. You got 1000 dollars. So 1000 dollar into 80 is 80,000. If you are getting it today, you will have 80,000 rupee in pocket. Imagine if it is tomorrow and Indian rupee is getting depreciated and the dollar new revised valuation is 90 rupee per dollar. What will happen? Instead of 80,000, you will be getting 90,000. It's good. Okay, so IT companies will be very happy if you get a depreciation for your local currency. 
but if importers will be badly affected by this importer have to pay more for their imports which is negative and it is a demotivation so it actually compels importer not to bring in goods from outside so it promotes exporters and it demotivates importers so this may be a country strategy to deal with uh, high imports now next is translation loss currency rest which leads to a situation of negativity due to re-evaluation of balance sheet that we have already discussed in case of data group is what is translation loss and then competitive disadvantage we quoted like where you see you got some foreign currency and now your your currency valuation is it adverse adverse means your uh, indian rupee has gone up and your foreign uh, currency which you are holding uh, actually it has gone down now you, when it goes down means it is negative and you may have lower profits from your total transactions that you have done now let's go forward to some of the other foreign exchange risk so they are transaction risk translation risk and economic risk transaction and translation already we had a discussion on but let's have a word on economic risk now economic risk the risk of a company's competitiveness and future cash flows being impacted by long-term currency movement now you see currency movement if if it falls today and then recovers next morning is all okay no problem but imagine if it is going down down and down only so since uh, the subprime crisis you see indian rupee was somewhere at 70 now it is 72 74 76 78 80 82 84 86 90 now you see this is always a one way movement it is not coming back leads to economic risk we don't discuss economic risk much but it is again and uh, 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 like you see a variable which influences your profitability now managing foreign exchange risk what you can do is like you can go into hedging you can go into diversification you can also manage your exposure to different currencies by being very calculative and then last is like you see whatever policy you create at central level at risk mitigation department it should be implemented similarly everywhere to have lesser exposure and minimizing your losses now the being let's be uh, discuss this concept of hedging in 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 a bit more detailed manner now hedging what is hedging hedging is actually a financial instrument to offset currency fluctuation and lock in exchange rates now you see imagine hedging is like a shield okay you take a shield against any of your future risk how you get this shield you have to pay a premium you have to pay a price there is an example written in the bottom. You see, what is this? Let's say you're running an airline company. Okay, airline company will make profit only when you're getting uh, good margins out of your every transaction that you do. Okay, now imagine what is your major cost in airlines industry? Air turbine fuel, fuel is your major cost. And let's say today you're getting air turbine fuel for 2000 US dollar. Okay, per, I don't know, maybe in barrel, so we, we get this air turbine fuel in barrel and per barrel i'm getting 2000 us dollar is my cost okay so imagine can, can you ensure what will be the price of crude oil this particular air turbine fuel after six months from now because you see demand and supply you don't know how will be the demand how will be the supply what will be the prices so profitability in this particular airline industry is dependent on this so what we can do is like we can go into a future contract where we fix a party who is ready to give us air turbine fuel at a particular rate so when other party is ready so what we are trying to do is like we are trying to minimize our exposure of foreign exchange to some of the like you see foreign exchange to a fixed value so we are not going to either increase it or reduce it so this is how we can put ourselves into a better position uh, but for this you have to pay a premium premium depends on what risk factor you do have next is diversification Diversification is where you are not only working in one 